Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Menchev here. It's the weekend. That means it's time for another drought update. And I got to tell you, the map looks identical because it is identical. The numbers have not changed. Still 53% of the state in that severe drought category, 24% in the lighter red, the extreme drought category, and exceptional drought, the highest level, 17% of the state, mostly in the San Joaquin Valley. So we are still in drought. That's not a surprise. We have we talked about this last week with the drought update last week, uh, how we made a lot of progress from last water year to this water year. And that's good news. But as we can see from this map behind us, we still have a long way to go. We always talk about how we need the rain, but it goes a little deeper than just how we need rain. We have a lot of things that influence the weather patterns and whether or not we see rain or don't see rain. One of the big ones, and we talk about this a lot. I'm going to go over it again today because as our expert, uh, you'll hear from him in a few minutes. As our expert calls this uh, uh, ENSO, the uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation. So La Nino or El Nino. This is the big enchilada. That's, that's a quote. That's what he said. This is the big enchilada in terms of what we call oscillations. So the first one is ENSO neutral, where we don't see a whole lot uh, of uh, variation, right? Everything's about where it should be. Cooler water off the coast of South America, warmer water out over the open Pacific, and a fairly decent current between the two. However, El Nino is one uh, oscillation, right? This is a positive phase, if you will, but we call this El Nino. So we have a lot more warmer water pushing back towards the coast of South America, right along the equator, right? And those trade winds are weaker. How does this impact weather here in North America? Well, it means we're typically in for a wetter year, especially in Southern California with Northern California kind of right on the line. But typically it is a slightly wetter than average winter. Uh, when we have El Nino conditions. Warmer across the upper portion of the United States, even into the Pacific Northwest, and drier across the middle part of the United States. That's during El Nino. But look what happens when we have La Nina. Things are reversed. Cooler water starts rushing up the coast to South America, really pushing out over the open Pacific, and those trade winds are much stronger. So the warmer water is way off into the Pacific, and again, cooler water dominates off the coast to South and Central America. How does that impact the weather pattern in North America? That means we are typically drier in Southern California. Again, Northern California, Sacramento, kind of right on the line between dry and wet, but it's more of a toss up here uh, than it is during El Nino year. So during El Nino, we typically see a little bit more rain than average. During La Nina, it really is close to 50-50, whether we're gonna see a lot, uh, a lot more rain or not quite as much rain in Northern California. But in the Pacific Northwest, it's almost always wetter, usually typically much colder as well across the Northern part of the United States, and then warm and dry across the Southeast, but warm and wet across the upper Midwest. That is Enso, El Nino and La Nina. Keep that in mind. That is the big enchilada, again, if you will. That's what our expert said, that is a quote. Uh, but it's not the only thing we look at. We also look at the Madden-Julian oscillation. Now this is a big player too, uh, but not on the same level, if you will, as in so. So let's look at this one. With Madden Julian, we typically have a wet area, right? So rising motion, we see lots of thunderstorms right around the equator. And then we have pockets of dry air, sinking air on each side. So one here in the brown, one here in the brown with wet right in the middle. Starts usually right over uh, the far Pacific, right? So into the Southeast Asia region. But this really orbits or, or spins across the world, goes around the equator, and it, the waves from the Madden Julian oscillation can impact weather. So it stays the same in principle. We have wet areas, we have dry areas, followed by wet areas and dry areas, but it goes around the globe. But let's talk about this. It's a wave, right? Think of it like a wave. You have periods of wet, then you have periods of dry, periods of wet. This repeats every 30 to 60 days. When you throw in the ENSO wave, so from La Nino or El Nino, if you have it where periods of dry weather uh, line up in periods of wet weather line up. You can have much wetter periods, so much more rainfall, but you can also have much more dry periods with much less rainfall. So it kind of makes the extremes even more extreme. If they're offset and they don't line up, right? So if they line up more extremes, if they offset and they don't line up, like what you see here with the MJO wave kind of dry and the ENSO wave a little more wet, then they kind of cancel each other out. And, and so uh, typically will dominate in whatever the pattern is, El Nino, El Nino La Nina, that's the one that'll win out. But again, that's not the only thing we look at. We also look at the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and this has to do with sea surface temperatures. So everywhere in this reddish color, that's much warmer uh, than average sea surface temperatures. Everywhere in blue, like into the Gulf of Alaska, is cooler than average. So when the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is in its warm phase, this is what it looks like. When it is in its cool phase, this is what it looks like. Much cooler temperatures across 
the water across the open Pacific all the way in towards Northern California and the Pacific Northwest, while those warmer sea surface temperatures are out over the far Pacific. That impacts our weather as well, and we'll get to that in just a second. But you can see when we look at current sea surface temperature anomalies, a lot of this is from La Nina. La Nina means cooler water over the equator. But with the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, in its cool phase, it can make these temperatures about a fraction of a degree to a degree cooler than normally would be. You can also see some warmer than average temperatures uh, near the Gulf of Alaska. So that's something else uh, that we watch. Again, not the only thing we look at. There's also an Arctic Oscillation, where at low pressure, when it's in the positive phase, low pressure sitting over the Arctic, high pressure south of it. That means the jet stream is typically not as wavy. Of course, we still have some waves in the jet stream. We always do, uh, but it's not as wavy. This means the cooler weather, the unsettled weather, typically stays up further north towards Canada, towards the northern United States as we go in towards the wintertime. If we flip it and we have a negative Arctic oscillation, then high pressure sitting over the Arctic, low pressure works its way further down towards the equator. That makes for a much more wavy jet stream, and that's how we get a lot of our weather events. Our rainfall events is when we have those wavy jet streams and when we have those low pressures that frequently dip down from the Arctic and bring us cooler weather, more unsettled weather. Uh, in the wintertime, again, that's how we get a lot of our rain. Those are the oscillations, but there's also another important one called the Pacific North American pattern. This might look familiar. I show this a lot on my weather pattern graphic, but this is actually a persistent pattern that we can see uh, by looking in towards the Pacific Northwest in the Gulf of Alaska. So in the positive phase of the Pacific North American pattern, high pressure sits over the western part of the United States. Sound familiar? low pressure over the Gulf of Alaska. This typically means drier and warmer conditions over the West Coast. Again, that sounds familiar because that's what we're seeing right now. The PNA pattern is in its positive phase. But if we flip it in the negative phase, here's what happens. High pressure moves out over the Gulf of Alaska. That allows low pressures to really ride that wave down in towards the West Coast, bringing us more low pressure, more unsettled weather. That means we typically see wetter and cooler conditions. So all these things add up to really affect our weather. And we can sort of forecast these things. We can look out ahead, and this is the PNA index. You can see it is trending positive right now. And again, forecasting out, same with the Arctic Oscillation. We can forecast it. And looking at the MJO, we can see areas in green, rising air. That's where we're seeing more rainfall. Areas in brown, sinking air. And you can see here's California and the U.S. West Coast. It's in the brown area right now, so it's predominantly sinking air. But these are all waves that emanate from that Madden-Julian oscillation that goes around the equator. So tropic, tropical weather does impact the weather across the globe. I'm not talking hurricanes. I'm talking large-scale patterns like the MJO. Here's a summary of those current oscillation states. In so, we're in the La Nina phase. That typically means a toss-up in terms of precipitation. Madden-Julian during the La Nina phase is typically weaker in the Pacific, in the Eastern Pacific. And what does that mean for us? That means we typically don't have as much rising air. We don't have that help, right, to fire off more storms to bring us that unsettled weather. So you combine the La Nina and the Madden Julian Oscillation, that means, well, now we're struggling for rainfall, right? But throw in the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, which is also in its negative phase, well, that also means less chances for rain, less uh, help in terms of producing that unsettled weather in terms of uh, the West Coast. So now we have three of these things working against us. Positive Arctic Oscillation also means, we just talked about this, also means uh, typically less unsettled weather for the West Coast, less chances for rain, uh, more stable atmosphere. And then finally, the Pacific North America pattern is in its negative phase as well. And we've seen that a lot. You've seen it on my weather pattern. Uh, you just saw it again a minute ago, that high pressure parks right over the West Coast and the low pressures have to ride the wave around it, right? They can't come through the West Coast of the United States. So all of these things, all five of these things, these large scale oscillation and weather patterns are working against us in terms of getting us that help to get some rainfall. So it's not as simple as we need a low pressure to drop down and get us some rain. That's kind of the one off, we, we welcome that, that's good, right? But it's not, exactly, uh, it's not exactly that pattern change that we need, it's kind of a one off thing. If we start flipping some of these things, if we were in an El Nino year, maybe that Mad Julian oscillation is a little stronger, uh, maybe that Pacific North America pattern is positive, so that high pressures over the Gulf of Alaska. Well, those three things alone would help to bring us more unsettled weather, give us a, a wholesale pattern change that really lasts and sticks around 
Well, unfortunately, all five of these things, again, are working against us. They're weaker, they're negative. In the case of the Arctic, it's positive, but that's not what we want to see in terms of helping to get us rainfall. So this was a very in-depth thing. Uh, the oscillations are not something we typically talk about on an everyday weather forecast because it, sometimes they last a long time. The Pacific Decadal literally can last 20 to 25 years in this pattern without changing. Uh, El Nino can last several years at a time. It can last several months at a time. La Nina, we've been in those conditions for about three years now, and we do expect to start to see a flip maybe uh, come next spring or so. Maybe we'll see that flip to more of an inso neutral or even an El Nino pattern, but until we get there, we are struggling for rainfall in the atmosphere just is not helping. We spoke to Bob Henson, Robert Henson. He's a climate scientist. He does a lot of great work with climate. We talked to him about these oscillation states and how it is impacting our rainfall or the lack thereof here in California. You do have kind of a train wreck of, of dryness producing influences for sure. I would say that um, not only in California, but across the United States and many parts of the world, uh, El Nino has a substantial role in predicting uh, rainfall during the, um, the northern winter, which of course is the wet season in California. But it isn't just El Nino, La Nina. There's more to the atmospheric puzzle. I think at different times of year, uh, they may vary in importance. I mean, certainly overall, ENSO is the big enchilada. So the PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, you can think of it kind of like a longer term um, El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's, it's kind of a way of looking at the aggregated um, effects that we think of as associated with El Nino and La Nina. So for example, let's say we might have a 20 year period where we trend a lot more toward La Nina uh, that is often associated with a negative um, PDO. And likewise, when the PDO is positive, you're, you're likely to get a lot more uh, El Nino. So um, that's why I think of them as kind of longer term. PDO tends to wax and wane on intervals of maybe 20, 25 years. Um, and it's not fully understood how the PDO and ENSO interact. The, the Mandelian oscillation is basically a pulse of, of shower thunderstorm convection that wraps its way around the globe over a period of, say, four to six weeks on average, or six to eight weeks. But that, that time scale can vary. It can slow down or speed up. Basically, it's a blob of, of, of moisture and rain that it circles the globe moving around the equator from west to east, and uh, some of that can extend up to ca toward California and modulate um, how much rain you're getting. I see the PNA as kind of a descriptor as much as anything. Uh, it's a way of describing a pattern that can set in for a chunk of a winter or sometimes the, the better part of a winter. Um, so, you know, one mode is where there's high pressure dominating on the west coast of the U.S. and Canada, and the jet stream is arcing up and then dipping down over the central eastern United States. And that tends to make it pretty droughty in the West and uh, pretty cool to cold in the East uh, when we're in the heart of winter time. Um, so uh, you can also get the PNA set up to where um, there's lower pressure coming into the West Coast. And that's obviously much more of a wet pattern for California. Um, so, uh, it, you know, the PNA can wax and wane on varying time scales, and it's it's not like something like El Nino La Nina where it sets in and you pretty much know it's going to be in place for most of the winter into the spring. These atmospheric oscillations and long-term patterns are already complex and in some cases not even fully understood. And yet we haven't even mentioned climate change. All these uh, oscillations are playing out amid obviously this longer-term warming trend, right? So I'm really interested in how the oscillations are going to be modulated by uh, human-caused warming. Um, it's difficult to to say exactly how that's going to happen, right? They're, they're complicated phenomena to begin with, and then how climate change is going to affect those. So, for example, it was thought for a long time we're going to have more El Nino-type conditions as the planet warms. There's now increasing evidence that, you know, we may actually flip more towards uh, more frequent La Nina, which obviously would have big implications for California. So, so that's sort of a stay tuned, watch the space thing. 